Hi. Uh, the video that you see here now is uh, one of the one of many uh, training videos that we have uploaded on YouTube to help you understand Kalki devices and their configuration. Uh, this specific video refers to uh, actual pro protocol gateway configuration. So I think I'll just first show you how the protocol gateway operates. Uh, if you see on the on your screen right now, there is a a slave device and uh, sorry, I think slide jumped. Okay. So if you look at your screen right now, there is a slave device and a master device. Uh, both are on different protocols. Let us say the slave device is on Modbus and the master device is on DNP. So what we need to do now is to have a gateway in between so that the slave device can actually talk to the master device. So for Kalki devices, we have something what we call a GPC core. And a GPC core resides within the uh, device and it has multi-protocol support. So the data that is transferred between the slave device and the master device can either be analog data or a digital data. Now this analog data or digital data uh, is actually transferred between the devices either by using a periodic port or by uh, unsolicited information or by event data. So uh, we could also actually transfer data from the master to the slave by using a series of commands. The commands again can either be digital or analog. So I just uh, move on to the next slide here, but I just want to conclude that this is the basic theory of operations that uh, for a protocol gateway and um, uh, I will next go to the actual configuration part of uh, sync devices. So to configure sync devices, we have a software called Easy Connect Configuration, which is shipped along uh, along our devices. So the Easy Connect configuration relies on a tree structure, and um, it has the following branches. Um, the main branch is the channel. And then after that, we have a node. And then after that, we have something called a data profile or data mapping. OK. So when we talk about the channel, uh, the, the channel is actually the main branch of the configuration file. The node is a sub branch to the channel. And the profile is, again, another sub branch to the node. So if you ask me what is the channel, I would say that a channel contains configuration parameters common to all are the devices downstream. And the node would be a, a more drilled down a sub branch containing uh, unique parameters for each of the devices downstream that needs to be translated from an application upstream. And the profile mapping in the EC Connect workbench is for uh, is a mapping segment and it maps each data type to its corresponding counterpart. So it, to illustrate this, I'll actually show you uh, uh, easy connect file um, just one second i'll just open an easy connect file here i'll just start a whole new file okay so you see there is the root this is the uh, workbench of the easy connect or the workspace of the easy connect configuration and we have uh, the root so that's a device and then i just add a device add a kalki device so the a kalki device could either be sync 2000, uh, which is our um, substation gateway, or could be 3000, which is a uh, which is positioned as a control center gateway, or um, we could sorry uh, we could either have a sync 3000, which is a more higher end device um, capable of actually accommodating more number of devices. Or it could be even Sync 4000, which is a control center front end. Uh, so, but right now I'd be using Sync 2000 to show you how natural configuration takes place. So, I just add uh, Sync 2000 here. And uh, by the way, Sync 2000 has six serial ports and one Ethernet port. So, to explain uh, what a channel is, I just add a channel here. 
I go to protocol configuration, I add a channel, or oh, let's say I add um, uh, Modbus. So I put Modbus here, and then you have a Modbus RTU master. So if you see uh, some of the configurable, configurable fields in the channel are uh, the port can be the channel type, it could be 485 or 232, the baud rate. So I could change the baud rate from 9600 to 90,200. So my point is that this, the channel contains configurable parameters that are, that are actually common to uh, a whole set of devices. And if I want to drill down and configure um, uh, more uniquely, then I go to add a station and I call it node. And then if you see, I could add, and I can actually add more than one node to each channel. So, so I add, let's say I add, I add three nodes. So I can actually give, so let us, supposing I have three devices downstream. So I, I am capable of, uh, the device is capable of assigning uh, different master addresses so that it would pull to each of them uniquely. So, I, so there I've added uh, three devices. <clears throat> so by adding three nodes and then uh, after that, I'll just uh, go on to add a profile. Uh, so just before that, I'll just take up the slide. Maybe we can, I can just show you what I'm trying to do. I will, if I, uh, this is the mapping. Uh, just want to show you how to map the device. So yeah. So what I'll try to illustrate is uh, using the EasyConnect for configuration is to make a configuration file that can map a Modbus slave device to a DNP3 device. So for that, I need to make a Modbus master and I need to make a DNP3 slave. So I'll just go back. So this is what I'm trying to do. And so what I'm trying to do is I map a Modbus device address one, which I've already done with baud rate 9800, which I've done. And I'm also adding parity and um, the stop it. So to this, uh, I will also be adding rows in the uh, profile sub branch so that I could pull data, which is uh, digital data and an, and an analog data. And once I map that, uh, my plan is to map it to, sorry, once I configure that, my plan is to map it to uh, DNP3 data sets. So I would, in this case, be taking uh, digital data, which is object one and variation zero, and analog data, which is object 30 and variation zero. Okay, so let me just show you how it is done. Uh, I will just, uh, uh, See, I've already, I've, okay, I've just add a row here. And, um, single indications, read coil status. So if you see the slide, uh, we are trying to add address one and count four. So I'll just add address one, number of points four. Okay, so that is done here and I just save this file. Okay, I add another row. Okay, and if you see, if you let us open the slide again. So we add uh, analog data. Okay, with uh, let us say unsigned holding register. So yeah, so I just add analog input data and I add holding register and data format unsigned. So start address one, number of points is four. So I put four here. Now my intention is, as you can see in the slide is to uh, map it so that a DNP3 slave, sorry, a DNP3 master application can actually read the data that is in the Modbus device. So what I do is I go to protocol configuration again, can okay, add, add a channel. So I add a slave channel and it's TCP here, it's DNP. So I give an IP, so okay, let us say the, the remote IP is, uh, 192.168.0.10, just an example. So, so, and after that, I go to station. And if you see the slide here, my intention was to actually uh, 
maybe to an application dnp application which has source address one and destination address four so i think that is already done here oh, sorry so source address yeah so just make it source address four and destination address four okay now that's that part is done and now i will proceed to actually do the mapping so i just take this and i i go back to profile select the slave that i want so in this case i want to map it to a dnp slave i go to the digital input row and then i add a map and that map is binary input starting address 1 number of points 4 okay so yeah that's about it so if i save it here so this would give me a dnp digital data with object 1 and variation 0 so i'll just proceed to go to the analog input part of it and then i add a map and then i go to analog inputs if you see it automatically comes out as analog inputs and then you give a starting address as uh, let's see what did the slide say okay the slide not say anything okay we'll just give a address as 4 Uh, let us say starting address as four and number of points uh, again four because number of points is four. So let us put a starting address as five. Okay, and then uh, again even class is zero and then you save it here. So this actually gives you. So what I have done is I have mapped a series of data points, digital data and analog data from a Modbus slave device, and I am translating it. to a dnp data objects uh which i'm mapping it to a digital data object and an analog data object so so we are done here and i let us say i just actually download this okay i need to save this I'll just save it to a desktop let us say okay let me type it say test one i save it I say configuration file. Okay, so I download it now. Yeah, the download is successful. So what we have done here is we have configured a gateway that is actually capable of allowing two devices to talk to each other and. Uh, I think we have come to the end of this session. I think the remaining videos will actually, uh, the remaining videos in this series will actually help you uh, in um, testing the device. So I think I leave it here. Thank you. Have a nice day.